Hello and welcome. You're watching News X, and I'm Megha Sharma. Now, amid the tragedy that struck Hathras yesterday, fingers are now being pointed at the organizers, the law and order agencies, the district administration, and the godman himself for playing with the lives of lakhs of people. Let's understand better from our guests how can such incidents be averted by managing the crowd better. Joining me on the telecast right now is Virinder. Slathia. He is the ex deputy CEO, Baba Amarnath Shrine Board, and Mata Vaishno Devi Shrine Board. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. And of course, sir, the first question, the obvious question the loss of life in Hathras Stampede has exceeded 120. Uh, the congregation they saw a gathering of as many as 2 lakh devotees. Who do you think should be held accountable for this uh, fatal incident that took place? Well, see, for every uh, yatra, there is a planning for that, and the organizers are always responsible. See, uh, uh, I had been to see for Sri Amarnath Ji Shrine Board and uh, Sri Mata Vaishno Devi Shrine Board. There we used to organize this yatra, and a lot of planning used to go to it. You know, we have to organize things, we have to lay out the plan, we have to work out the medical facilities to be provided, rescue teams to be stationed. All these plannings have to be, you know, in advance. So, in this case, uh, I think some some lack of planning, uh, you know, went into it. That is the reason a uh, huge tragedy has taken place. Now, uh, this man, this self self styled Godman by the name of Bhole Baba, he was a former cop. He turned into a spiritual guru. Now he's vanished without a trace. Uh, after so many people died. He had also organized a satsang during the peak time of COVID-19, which, which saw as many as 50,000 people. Despite the direction being given by the cops that not more than 5,000 people can congregate at the location. How do you view these, uh, you know, revelations that are coming to fore? Uh, do you also feel it is the man himself who is responsible for the death of so many people? Well, uh, whoever organizes uh, such events, uh, for this uh, most important thing is that while organizing these events, a particular you know uh, plan is to be made. How exits are to be uh, you know put in place, and how medical facilities are to be there, and whoever is the organizer is responsible for, for such a kind of tragedies. You know. Uh, and he should be, uh, I think, uh, uh, taken to task. Right. Now, what measures do you think should be implemented to prevent such a situation from taking place again? Well, whenever such, uh, you know, uh, events are organized, it is duty of the organizers to first of all identify the place and then uh, see how many uh, devotees or uh, whoever pilgrims are you know about to throng the area they have to uh, see all these things and then visualize if any such event takes place how to ex uh, you know uh, safe exit uh, how to give safe exit to such pilgrims and the crowd so crowd management is a very very uh, you know tedious thing for this a uh, lot of planning has to be done volunteers are to be in place then uh, security is to be in place then uh, the permission for which uh, you know uh, number of persons who are to be allowed to visit that place should not exceed and if it exceeds then administration is responsible for that now talking about this particular situation that occurred yesterday there was only one exit and entry gate for people to then enter and uh, uh, get out of that canopies that had been built uh, what do you think should be the safety measures that should be kept in mind when hosting such large scale events with people in lakhs turning up well, uh, when you are hosting uh, such events uh, particularly the religious events uh, special uh, care is to be taken that there should be a separate entrance and separate exit route and exit route should not be uh, one exit route it, uh, there should be number of exit routes because uh, th i feel this uh, was organized in an open place and uh, I, I don't know why uh, small exit points were kept in uh, this uh, particular case. 
so exit points need to be you know more in number so that people can easily exit moreover emphasis should be laid on volunteers who guide them to the exit point and main uh, you know concern in this uh, situation is the communication there should be a loud and clear communication from loudspeakers be uh, these uh, public address systems uh, who can uh, by which you can guide the people from where to enter from where to leave these things need to be taken care of uh, well in advance so that such situations uh, do not arise what were the irregularities and lapses that you found in this incident in this particular case what i gathered from the news i am reading and i am uh, you know seeing on the television i find that there was a chaos because of lack of uh, you know guidance to the pilgrims to the people who had assembled there there were no signages there were uh, you know by, the chaos was because the vip route was not separate uh, if if that uh, man who was giving the you know sermons there should have a separate exit and there should have been a separate exit for the public there would have never been such a tragedy all right thank you virin this latia for giving us uh, your views on the subject now dr d uh, virendra hegade joins me on the telecast from shri kshetra dharmshala's uh, dharma adhikari uh, first question sir about the loss of life in hathras stampede that has exceeded 120 uh, what do you think was the reason so many people died at the event i cannot say because this has not happened uh, very frequently because uh, in the in north india daily people gather like this but in south india there are very few people who gather in a uh, congregation like this and uh, i think uh, the organizers should take care of uh, the in incoming and outgoing uh, entrances and uh, see that flow there's enough ventilation they should not be like galyan wala baba I just think it immediately my mind runs to Jalian Wala Bagh, where there was single entry and no exits. So this should not happen again. Now uh, this man, the cell style Godman, was a former cop. He then turned into a spiritual guru. He is uh, nowhere to be found. He is absconding. Uh, he was the one who was, uh, uh, you know, organizing the congregation. he this was uh, you know he's flouted many norms in the past as well during covid there were as many as 50000 people who were attending one of his congregations which was in violation of the 5000 people that the district authority the law and order agency has had approved for uh, his uh, congregation now uh, uh, sh- should this man be held solely responsible for the death of the 220, 121 people the people should also mind that is even uh, more people are there they should behave more responsible now i find that uh, they think of individualistic they think i and my my i and my family only should be secure they don't think of the lot people other people who are there so this is very pathetic they must always think of the gathering other people also there and respect the others respecting others is very important they don't respect the other people they they only think of themselves and their family that is the problem even while going out or rushing out i don't know whether there was a delay in uh, uh, closing of the function and they were in a hurry to go to the bathroom or hungry that both i don't know i am not i have been reading news papers but it's not very clear uh, how fast they have to be uh, exactly like uh, food two things are there one is food another is Uh, uh, toilets so both uh, for such a big crowd i don't think they had enough toilets enough food supplied and the people were in a hurry to go back that's why i think this has happened you know you've been you're used to managing such huge crowds uh, what measures do you think do you think should be implemented to prevent such situations from happening uh, see one first thing is And the gathering should be controlled there should not be more than 25000 people and second part is in mela in 
our uh, Hindu congregations, we can't imagine how many people will come. There will be more than a lakh or two lakhs. But there should be sufficient toilets, sufficient uh, places for uh, the, uh, their uh, emptying stomach, and there should be good feeding places. We are also having about a lack of people, three, three, like two to three lakhs people on festivals like uh, Kartik Mas in the month of December. But what we do is uh, we have enough toilets made and enough uh, places for the people to come and uh, have food. So the, we have got about 11 uh, counters or 12 counters where they can individually go and have their food. We have volunteers to guide them, control them. And even after the eating food, they throw their plates. We have these areca plates. So there also we have some uh, control means guide, guiding people, people to guide them. So guiding is very important in these places. Enough uh, sound uh, announcements and uh, mark, marked uh, hand, hand uh, posts so that they can go this way, have their food, wash their hands, wash their uh, plates, throw their plates. That is very important. Yes. Now, as more information is uh, coming to surface, we are, you know, the police forces have now told us that there was only one entry and exit point uh, for people to uh, have access to the satsang, to this event. Uh, what are the safety measures that should be kept in mind while hosting such large scale events? That's why I said, like, it, it reminded me of Jalianwala Bag. So, here, they must have uh, enough uh, outlets where uh, they go. Normally, uh, if it is within a compound wall, compound and uh, restricted place, they must have enough outlets and uh, guide the people, go, guides should be there, volunteers should be there to uh, go ask them. And, and at last, in the uh, many functions I have found in uh, North India, people, they make an announcement like uh, the guru, or the chief who organizes the function, he makes an announcement that we go, go slowly, don't hurry, and uh, there are uh, and uh, many many places. We started having a cultural show in the end, so that people can stay a little longer than what they were expected to. Not that all people should get up and exit at once. So we should we make an announcement saying that there is a drama, there is a dance or something. So please go slowly. Only those people who are in a hurry can go, otherwise be seated for some more time. So always our tension is on the end, not in the beginning. Beginning people start to end uh, when they go, there will be crowding. So we always think of closing, closing function, where we guide them, we give them guidance to go slowly, to go in a line and uh, see that uh, the crowd is not disturbed. So that, that should be the responsibility of the guru who controls the whole show. If he is not aware of these things, then uh, uh, this uh, crowding and uh, rush will be there. So I request the organizer, especially the guru, or the person who is responsible for the congregation, to take uh, responsibility of exiting also. What were the irregularities and lapses uh, that you find concerning? Uh, that have emerged in this event? Now that, uh, let the government think of it. I don't uh, say how they should do it, but uh, there should be proper, uh, uh, there's an alarm for all the congregations and festivals and uh, also you see, the such uh, festivals. We have got many festivals in every village. Every village has a congregation. So today's people are in a hurry to go back so every function should be monitored, every fair, temple affair should be monitored and uh, this is how we should be organized. We should, we should take maximum care of the congregation and see that there should not be any crisis when they go back. Thank you very much for sharing those details and giving us advice through your experience of managing crowds. All right, on that note, let's also take a look at uh, some of the worst stampedes and crowd crushes that the country has witnessed in the past and also the worst stampedes that have occurred across the globe. And uh, 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 giving you an idea about 
uh, where all these stampedes had taken place in India and in various parts of the world. Here's a look at the five worst stampedes in India. This was in Mandir Devi temple. The stampede happened in 2005. The date was 25th of Jan. They were under, uh, around 340 people who died in this stampede. Uh, there were around 300,000 people who were gathered at this temple. Uh, the stampede uh, happened after some devotees slipped on the temple stone. And then there were hundreds that died because of this misadventure. Uh, stampede uh, that took place in 2008, that is Chamunda Devi temple is where this stampede took place on 30th of September in 2008. Uh, there were thousands of devotees that gathered at the temple to offer their prayers and some of them lost their footing which caused other people to fall over each other and uh, many lost their lives. Uh, there was another stampede, this happened at a temple as well, there was Nana Devi temple. Uh, it happened in two, uh, in, on 3rd August 2008, there were more than 140 people who died in this unfortunate incident. There was, there was a rain shelter that had collapsed near the premises of the temple which people mis mistook as a landslide. The devotees, devotees panicked, they tried to escape and uh, which led to this stampede and people climbing, crushing one over the other. Uh, there was a Mumbai railway station stampede that took place on 29th September 2017. This was the stampede that took place on Elphinstone railway station. There were casualties of over 200 people who died. The commuters took the shelter at the crowded Elphinstone railway station footbridge. As it was raining, the stampede, stampede happened when some people in the crowd slipped. There was another stampede that took place. This was the Prayag Kumbh Mela, 10th February 2017. There were more than 40 people who died in this stampede in the Kumbh Mela. Then there was the Mumbai railway station stampede again. There were 30 million people who were gathered. All right, there were 30, people, 30 million people who were gathered at the Kumbh Mela. This was in Prayagraj. The stampede broke out due to overcrowding of the railway platforms and that led to the loss of 40 people. And now taking a look at uh, some of the worst stampedes that killed many people across the globe. There was the Mina stampede. This took place on 24th of September 2015. There were 2,300 people who died in this incident. Uh, the crowd crush happened in Mina at the intersection of the streets 2004 and 223. There was a Seoul, uh, Seoul Halloween crowd crush. It happened on 29th of October 2022. There were 159 people who died in this crowd crush. And in this, uh, in the South Korean capital, there was the crush that started when a group of young men pushed each other under and the people started falling over each other. There were hundreds of people who piled on top of each other that led to the deaths and the stampede that ensued. It was the, another third, disaster number three, Kanjuru Han Stadium disaster. It happened on 1st October 2022. There were 135 people who died in this stampede. There was falling a loss by a football team that there were 3,000 of the supporters who invaded the pitch. There were some people who attacked the players and the team officials as well. Uh, the police riot unit deployed the tear gas over there which triggered a stampede on the field, on the football field. Let's take a look at stampede number four that happened in Sanaa crowd crushed. It was on 19th of April 2023, last year. There were 90 people who died in this unfortunate incident. There was a crowd crush that occurred after people gathered in front of a school to receive the traditional AKMS of Zakat al-Fitr. And the shots were fired for crowd control that caused an accidental explosion and which led to panic amongst the people. Let's take a look at number 5 where the Ivory Coast stampede took place. It happened on 1st January 2013. There were 61 people who died in this incident. And what happened in this incident was uh, there was panic that was created and uh, 
they, that, they, that led to the chaos that ensued. All right, having, having had a look, it was crowd crushed that happens, people departed on New Year's Eve, the fireworks displayed and the people unfortunately died in that incident. Joining me also on the telecast right now is uh, Uday Sai, is the former IPS. Uday Sai, you know, unfortunate incident take, that is taking place and my focus right now is over if there had been better crowd management, this disaster would not have happened. Uh, what according to you went wrong and particularly the responsibility of the law and order agencies when a, such an incident of such a magnitude has taken place in, uh, in your district, in your village uh, and, and it is the uh, Subdivisional magistrate who has given the permission, and even if it was a permission to have a congregation of 50,000 people, there are 2.5 lakh people who have emerged over there who have come for the event. It become, don't you think it becomes the responsibility of the law and order agencies and the district magistrate to ensure that all safety measures are put up, or at least the organizers who, the, who have been given this uh, permission? there should be all checks and balances in place to ensure that they are taking all measures. Can you hear me, sir? Uh, whom are you uh, sir, addressing? Uday, addressing? Sir, sir, you, Uday Sahai. I'm asking this question to Uday Sahai. Okay, Brigadier B.K. Khanna, uh, he is a former member of the NDMA. Thank you for joining me on the telecast. And, and your views about, uh, you know, this disaster could have been very easily averted. Uh, what were the problems? Uh, no, the problem it was there right from the beginning only. And uh, that was basically uh, the district administration, I would take it. Because uh, the SDM has given, uh, in fact, a clearance of about 80,000 people. And after that also, there is, they have washed out their hand. And after that, I mean, who was monitoring it after that? Organizers, yes, they are uh, responsible. They no doubt on that only. But uh, there is a responsibility of the, uh, the district administration also. Or in this case, there are a number of things which has come out. Firstly, of course, I mean, let's take it. Uh, you know, they, you have been also uh, saying it, uh, episode, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the stampede as well as the crowd crush. Let me tell you what is the difference between the crowd crush and the uh, this stampede. Stampede happened when you're entering it and then after that there is some so there is some blockage is there. Blockage can be anything else and when you're entering it. Too. And the crowd crush is there when you're en from uh, exiting it. Exiting only there's some blockage which has come up there. So that's why so that it is, uh, we can call it a crowd crush rather than a, uh, 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 the thing is stampede also. Now the thing is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 80,000 people uh, have, have been allowed, but 2 lakh, 20, I mean, as, a, as per the police, 2.5 lakh people uh, were there. I mean, who were checking it? I mean, uh, uh, did they, in fact, um, they must have invited the people from all over. They must have estimated what they required to be then, something. So, and then, of course, the, the uh, district administration and the organizer both should, be, should make sure. Uh, that in case the number is increasing more than 80 or something, uh, put them on a hole, put them on a hole and then only should be allowed to get into. Thirdly, the area which is there, which was there only is an open field. An open field and that is also a muddy, slippery mudder, mud which yeah. is there. And rain, rain is taking place. This is a time, as we all know, it is a rainy season. It is in fact, I mean, uh, there is a heat, I mean, the heat is there only. There is in fact, a, uh, as far as uh, 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 the sweating is concerned, there's a hell of a lot of sweat which is taking place. One can choke very easily. That is the reason if you see here, out of 121, uh, 112 are the women and 7 are the children. That's basically because they are the ones who have been most vulnerable and they are the ones who have been infected. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, they have died in that. Yes. Okay. And the uh, thirdly one, is the exit. The exit uh -huh. is very, very important in this case, something. So the exit is only, as we, as you also said, so the one entry, one exit, how can that be? One exit rate is a so short, in fact, you know, inviting the disaster. They know not on that only. And that is what exactly has happened. And uh, uh, I am uh, I'm hopeful that inquiry will bring out uh, more details on uh, this one only. And uh, uh, the culprit should not be get, uh, get let, let there be a lesson. Because we have been, I mean, as you also counted a number of, 
uh, in fact, uh, the incident which has taken place, let there be you know, so that of course somebody has gone into the Supreme Court also to uh, uh, get it. If you remember, uh, in fact, in the school safety also, uh, uh, there were uh, guidelines which have been laid down by the Supreme Court in 2009. And because there was nobody, in fact, you know, when uh, uh, something happened there in, in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, 99 people, um, 99 children had died. Similarly, here now uh, somebody has gone to the Supreme Court, please give a, a guideline on this so that these things do not happen. And I'm sure, of course, the Supreme Court will take action on this one also. Yeah. And, and, and I'm going to mention it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Brigadier Khanna, for giving me all those updates. And, and obviously, uh, you know, insight that you have, deep insight, because you being a former member of the NDMA and you would know so much about how uh, crowds are managed on a daily basis to ensure such incidents do not take place, such tragedies do not reoccur. Uh, Uday Sahai, if you can hear me. Uday Sahai, if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you very much. Uh, so, thank you very much for joining me. And Udes, I, how do you view this incident? It, you think it could have been very easily averted? This was a man-made tragedy that has killed 121 people. Well, I mean, uh, there are two parts. One that you get into some kind of a post-mortem. Udes, I, before I, before, I have to interrupt you. I'm, um, I'm sorry, but you, you know, you, your camera is switched off, so we cannot see you. Yeah, please oh, go ahead. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yes. You see, there are two parts of the incident. One, of course, before the tragedy took place. The normal SOP which is followed uh, is that uh, you receive an application from the organizer and then the first question you ask to them that what is the expected crowd. Here I'm told that the expected crowd, crowd was 80,000. But the actual congregation of the devotees was to the figure of 2.5 lakh. So this is a huge, uh, huge difference. And when you when you give a permission, not only you lay down other conditions, uh, you, you make sure that it is backed by some kind of a field verification, which was not done because the guy had a track record of violating rules, even in the midst of uh, COVID-like uh, serious situation. With a background like this, still you give him a permission, which is okay. But before, once you go to the spot, and I'm told that the OC, the officer in charge and the SDM were present at the time of incident. And uh, what they were doing for two hours. Yeah. They were, uh, the, the, the whole thing happened in the end of the talk of the so-called Baba. But for two hours, they kept became a mute witness to the gross violation, which was everybody, which was there for everyone to see, and yet they did not react. Now this is one part. So there is a huge, uh, huge lapse somewhere which has taken place. I am not saying it is deliberate, but I am certainly saying that because of in absence of any SOP or a clear cut guideline, it's all very impressionistically done. Yeah. And if you, you know, but, but you can't say, you can't say, listen, it was not done deliberately. We deliberately did not want to kill the people and therefore they are, we are absolved of all our responsibility and accountability. The fact that you did not have, uh, uh, you know, emergency vehicles right outside uh, that canopy that had been built where the event were ta was taking place. There was no first state uh, 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 arrangements that had been done. There was a single exit and entry point. Uh, Instead of the 50,000 people, there were 2.5 lakh people that congregated. It was the organizers who were greedy and therefore they wanted to uh, put in minimum amount of money and gain and, and earn maximum, generate maximum amount of revenue out of it that they put in the least amount of effort, especially when it ca ca comes to mind the safety and security of the people. So obviously they need to be uh, put behind bars. Obviously there needs to be a case of culpable homicide against all these individuals. I was coming to that. You are very, I mean, both of us are on the same page, except that what I'm trying to say that, mind you, this was a private event organized by a private guy. It was not state organized event. So the role of the state 
is to make sure that whatever terms and conditions are laid is implemented on the ground. And if it is not implemented, then immediately not only you take them off, maybe you stop the event. You stop the so-called VIP to come and occupy, uh, take a centre stage on the stage, hmm. uh, which I also did feel, not happen. I also feel when there are all these political rallies and public addresses that are, be, that are being held, that are held. We saw the campaigning that was in full stead. There were hundreds and thousands of people who gathered and who attended these rallies. Uh, uh, how come there was not a single such untoward incident that has taken place there? Uh, uh, when, when, uh, when a political party uh, holds such an event, it is, not, it is not an event that is being looked after by the government of that state. It is an event which is a private event. It's a political event. So, so how come, how come, when such an event take, takes place, uh, that there are, uh, you know, all guards up of law and order agencies of the district magistrates, and when incidents such as this has taken place, nobody is bothered how many people die. Nobody is bothered if there was medical assistance that was provided on the ground on the spot. There is nobody is bothered if there were there were, uh, uh, you know. Uh, adherence of the rules, laws and regulations that had been done by the organizers. You are very true. I mean, you are very right and uh, there is no dispute in what you are saying except that a political party when they organize, it is either during election or little before the election, once in a while also meets between two elections. Here And therefore, the state machinery is geared up very, very differently. For example, if there is a, there is a big public gathering, you you divide, you segmentalize the entire venue in such a manner that there is a very smooth kind of a movement of crowd. And there are a number of exit uh, uh, and entry points. And also there is an emergency exit point. Right. In addition to this, right, absolutely. you organize... That's, that, that's exactly, you know, that's, that's the ir irony of the an, 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 an unfortunate thing to happen uh, when there are big ministers or when there are big politicians who are uh, and people with you know great stature and respect in 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 the country uh, when events are organized for them uh, it's our law and order agencies our uh, administration agencies authorities who have their guard up who ensure that things happen smoothly who ensure that such incidents don't uh, happen unfortunately because is, because there are poor people over there a, no, nobody was concerned. The authorities were like, yeah, you go about doing your event. Does not matter if you have the NOCs or not in place. Does not matter if the number of 50,000 that is approved increases to 250,000. It doesn't really matter. And now it matters because there are 121 people who have dead, who are dead. It, 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 uh, uh, it is, it is uh, you know, bringing bad reputation for the chief minister, for the district magistrate, for the law and order agencies in Hathras. And obviously this is now going to further escalate. Thank you very much, sir, for joining me on the telecast.